Okay, so after nearly 30 years, most of you are now well aware of this problem. Broken corners, discoloured lights, broken edges. Up till now you could buy a new one for an arm and a leg price, but fortunately we can now get replacement lenses. And with this video I intend on showing you how to replace those lenses. Okay, so the first part uh, that we have to deal with is removing the old lens. Fortunately Mitsubishi's made this nice and simple for us. All you're going to need is two tools, a plastic trim tool and a 10mm socket piece. You put your 10mm socket piece onto this little nut or bolt down the side here. It's the one nearest to the lamp. Get your socket on there. Remove the short bolt, making sure you don't drop it into the uh, workings of the car. Now you need your plastic trim tool and you tuck that under one corner while at the same time getting a finger under this corner and just lift the lamp up. It just pops out nice and easy. How's that? Okay, so for the next part of the demonstration you're going to need a couple of things. A domestic oven, a flip screwdriver, some sort of pick tool, a flathead screwdriver and uh, a leather glove or something similar that will take some heat resistance from your hand. Now it's worth pointing out at this point that these light units come in multiple versions. The North American version does not have any light built into it whereas the European, Japanese etc do have a light built into them. The process is exactly the same for both lamps. Okay, so now we start off with the more scary part of the video. Normally when you tell people you're going to be putting plastic parts into an oven, they wet themselves and say no way. But in this case, it's completely safe. We're going to be sitting in the oven, preferably a fan oven to help circulate the heat. Do not use a grill oven, just the oven part itself. You need to set it to around about 140 to 160 degrees and at that temperature there won't be any damage to your light units. While the oven's preheating we can start dismantling the lamps because we don't need to be putting any metal parts in there and we certainly don't want to be putting any of the electrical parts in there because they may not handle the heat so well. Too many fingers and thumbs. So anything that unscrews off your light unit you unscrew while the oven's preheating. Now you'll notice on uh, some of the European versions there is two extra screws as well as the light unit screws. These extra screws hold in a chrome backing that's inside the light unit and of course that isn't on the American models. So with all those parts off, we now put our light units onto a baking tray and in a few minutes once the oven's reached the right temperature we'll put that into the oven and I'll pick it up from there. Okay so hopefully now our oven is preheated. Um, just before we stick these in I'll explain the reason we put them in the oven. The two halves of the lens have been put together and held together using a bitumous rubber. Over time that rubber has become very hard and it now makes it impossible to separate the two halves without softening the rubber. Um, just before we whack it in, um, time has helped us a little bit because hopefully now this rubber gasket around the edge can be slightly pulled out and that will enable us to get the screwdriver in there to prise the two parts apart. So if any of that have come out Now's the time. If it won't, it doesn't matter. It just makes life a little bit easier after it's been in the oven. Make sure you don't tear the gasket because replacement ones aren't available. Just pull out whatever will come out relatively easy. So 
so there we'll leave it at that and now we stick them in the oven and you're going to leave them in there for about two minutes now the time is not critical the time is just to help soften the rubber we'll bring them out we'll try to separate them if it's not soft enough we'll put them back in and then we'll just keep on doing it in one or two minute intervals just to try and soften the rubber enough to separate the two halves okay so two minutes have passed now we'll give it our first attempt at getting these things apart don't forget your gloves all important gloves pull these out and now you see there's one clip here one here and two on the other side we need to try and lift this grey piece of plastic over the top a little bit and then you can get a screwdriver in there and try and prise these apart now bear in mind you are going to be uh, disposing of the clear plastic it doesn't matter if you break it while trying to get this apart so at this stage, I don't think that glue is quite soft enough. It's very cold here in England at the moment. Um, so we might have to put these back in the oven a bit longer. Uh, that one's just starting to lift. So there you go. You can see the glue starting to prise apart. The reason I wanted to take off the rubber first is so we don't risk puncturing it with the screwdriver. And there we go. This is now cold enough for me to hold. That's the first one apart. Let's try this one. Okay, beautiful. First attempt. Now this uh, system that they're glued with, the bitumous rubber, is used on the rear lights as well. So if for any reason you need to take your rear lights apart, um, you can put them in the oven just the same without the electrical cables and you'll be able to pull those apart as well. Um, which is definitely worth bearing in mind because a lot of the rear ones allow water to get in and then they become useless. By taking them apart and replacing the rubber, you can stop them leaking again. Um, now at this point we're going to put the two grey parts back in the oven and I'll show you why in just a minute. So now we're back to the oven. The lump units have been back in the oven for another minute, minute and a half and the reason is the bitumous rubber as it cooled on the top there it's gone back firm again. So we'll take them back out the oven and now you need to spend a couple of minutes cleaning all this grey rubber out. Now you can see now it's been in the oven it's almost like a liquid, a chewing gum type um, consistency. Rather sticky and horrible um, but you need to get almost all of it out. Just do your best to clean the channel as good as possible. If you don't get it completely clear then you'll have trouble getting the new lens back in. Spend a bit of time on this couple of minutes. You may have to put it back in the oven over and over again just to make sure you get it all out. We'll cut the video there and come back to it once I've uh, cleaned it off. Okay, so I've spent about five minutes cleaning out the bitumous rubber from the channels around the lens. Um, it's worth spending the time to make sure these are as clean as possible because fitting the new lenses will depend on nice clean channels. Also, um, those of you that have the reflectors inside, age has caused the reflectors in most cases to go very uh, brown and yellow. This is regular spray paint on here, so you could always go and get a new can of uh, just regular household spray paint with a chrome finish and respray them to look like new. Or alternatively, 
you can take this opportunity to modify and upgrade your lights to something a bit more modern, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, there's one other thing. On the uh, glass part of the lens, we've still got these rubber seals. Now, these can't be replaced, although you can cut a piece from standard rubber, you just won't have the lip on the edge. So, we need to take these uh, rubber gaskets off, and this is just a very slow, gentle process of bit by bit peeling them away. Once again, age has helped because uh, UV light and age has caused the glue to break down and they come off quite easily. Some of them you'll find where bits have been broken off, the rubber's been allowed to warp. So before we fit them, uh, we're going to put them in some hot water, give them a really good scrub in some hot soapy water, and hopefully that will make it soft enough to refit as it should be. So we'll peel those off now. And then I'm going to cut the video while I spend a couple of minutes cleaning out those gaskets. Then we'll move on to the next stage. So for cleaning, simple process. You can use any old kitchen cleaner, soapy water, whatever you like. Now, for those of you that have got rubbers that have gone really hard, it's worth going on the internet because there are a few techniques to soften the rubber back up um, should hot water and the regular cleaner not do it. So uh, again, I'll cut the video at this point while uh, I clean these up and leave you to do the same. So now we're all cleaned up, we're ready for the more exciting part of our project to make our car look nice and new again. So the new lens um, now is available in the original Mitsubishi Grey, or luckily you can now buy it clear. Now with the clear ones you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can frost it inside, some people are seen uh, have them frosted, you can uh, spray them with a tint, or if you fancy being ambitious, you can colour code them, you can put different accents on, you can do pretty much anything you want. Um, but these are the only two versions that are available as standard. So, when you come to uh, fitting them back into the, the main body, there's some things we need to remember. First of all, you're going to need to bond the rubber gasket to the lens housing. Now, due to shipping regulations, we can't ship liquids anymore. So you're going to have to pop down your local hardware store or car auto centre and get yourself some PU sealant or some RTV rubber glue. Now, I'd recommend if your rubber's gone a bit old and doesn't quite fit correctly anymore, get the PU sealant, it's much, much stronger. Um, and then what you can do is stretch your rubber into place, use some clips to hold it in place while the PU dries, and then once it's dry, you'll be able to remove the clips and the rubber should stay in place. That's assuming your rubber is too old to recover from its original uh, state. So now we begin sticking the rubber to the lens. Um, Awfully messy job if you're not careful and it's going to get messier. So we run a thin bead and it is only a thin bead because we don't want it spreading out all over the place. A thin bead of uh, RTV or PU sealant all the way around the lens. Yeah, I could do it some more hands here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all the way around. So once we've got a good end-to-end -end coating, 
Perhaps put a little bit more on this end because you've got quite a lot of rubber to cover there. I'll put the lid back on that because this will start hardening if I don't. And put the top back on. Okay. So now we grab our rubber gasket and we'll drop that gently over the top there. Luckily this one I did manage to get uh, fairly supple again. And we're going to position it exactly where it feels like it needs to pe be positioned. And let's just hope it will all go into place. Fortunately this stuff is fairly slow drying so once we've got it all together I'm going to clean up any over um, spill to tidy up the job. So already it's starting to come into to shape, look pretty nice. And now we're ready for the next bit which is not my favourite bit. So this is bitumous rubber, it's the same original stuff that was on the original lens to put it back together. And then of course if you ever need to take it apart again, you can uh, just do exactly the same process, put it back in the oven and uh, pull it apart. So what you need to do with this is go very very carefully over the edge. If we can line that up just right. Gone about this the right way. Let's turn that over. Okay. So we gently bend it over each side of the edge, and that way it should give us a nice clean seal once we go to put it into the main housing. Now try not to stretch it out too much because it'll become thin. It's a very, very stretchy material. Around the corner there. Now you need to make sure you get good coverage all the way around, otherwise, you'll end up with water and moisture in there, and that's something you don't want. Once you've got a little bit more of this than you need, so you can spend your time in getting it all the way into every single corner properly. overlap at the end and cut it with a pair of scissors. Okay. So now we're ready. Just offer up the new lens to the old housing. And if we can get this all lined up correctly, that should all drop nice and neatly into there. That takes a bit of force to press it into those holes. Just clean up any overspill. And there we go, ready to go back on the car. Now I recommend uh, perhaps leaving it uh, overnight just to make sure the rubber stays in the right place. 
before you fit it because when you go to fit it it may well push the rubber out of position so just let it all set overnight and then uh, you've got a nice new looking lens again so just remember if you're putting back together a lens with the chrome backing then you need to remember to put the chrome backing in before you put on your rubber seal and bitumous rubber the reason is this lens is almost the same size and it'll get stuck to the rubber as you put it in so if you put that in first then put on all the other parts then assemble it you'll find that once you push it together you can easily reach into this hole pull the chrome backing up to put your screws in and everything goes back together as normal um, and then of course finally with both lenses don't forget to put on all your metal work and cables after. Thanks for watching the video.